Professor Ye, thank you so much for taking time off. Uh, I know you just arrived to Singapore. Um, just so, just a couple of questions um, uh, uh, about your participation in the World City Summit. Um, you are a, a respected academic, and you've researched a lot about Asian cities and and uh, and planning. Um, can I ask you to speculate? Uh, since you'll be speaking in the session entitled "Intensities Tomorrow," uh, can you speculate about how high density cities can become more livable and more sustainable in the long run? No, I think in Asia, I think uh, it is difficult for us not go into the high density uh, cities because of the growing uh, populations. Just take China for example, right? The present urbanization rate is 50%, and by year 2040 um, uh, or so, well, you will have another something like uh, going to 70%, right? And that volume we are talking about something like uh, 300 million or 200 million. And that size is the total size of the America, right? And uh, given that size, uh, uh, basically the cities have to grow, right? And so Asia itself, we have a lot of limited land. Uh, and so we, unfortunately, although we would like to have a development like America, where we have a, everybody have their own house, own garden, but this is something that we cannot afford, right? And so developing high density cities is inevitable in um, Asia. How do, how do we make high-density cities more livable and more sustainable? Well, I think uh, we have been uh, already uh, having high-density uh, development for the past uh, two or three decades already. But I think there's a lot of things that can be improved. Right? For example, uh, like in uh, Hong Kong or to a certain extent like in some old parts in uh, Singapore uh, where the buildings are very close together. And so how do we have a better building form, better urban design? Uh, to improve the quality of living. For example, um, the distance from one building to another building, can it be a little bit uh, some sort of a, f a farther away and so that you can have a much better ventilations and also uh, feel less crowded. And also in terms of the uh, urban design, uh, can it have more landscaping, have more public open space. So these are the, some of the things that can able to make this high density living much better. Can I ask you to speculate on the future of Asian cities via uh, Western cities? How different will Asian cities be, be from Western cities? Well, I think the difference will be uh, greater in the future uh, because I think uh, uh, because of the uh, changes in the population dynamics, right? The, as I mentioned, um, the Asian urbanization is growing very fast, right? For example, the whole uh, world, uh, we just only passed the 50% um, you know, urbanization rate. But most of these growth are not from North America or Europe, are from Asia and also from some different countries, right? And so it will now go to visit cities in uh, Asia, a lot of places like uh, Singapore, like um, Shanghai, like Taipei or uh, Korea. You'll find that this is a major construction site, right? One of the cities, like in China, the total volume of construction can be equivalent to the whole of any country in Europe. Right. In Europe and also in North America, a lot of the cities are basically shrinking because of the populations. The population size actually is also uh, shrinking. And so a lot of the type of urban development in the European cities as well as North American cities will be based on urban regeneration. How we are going to or how they are going to repackage the uh, old uh, buildings, the old districts to revitalize the type of uh, economic activities and also their appearance. Right? and also how do they deal with the old urban infrastructure. Whereas in Asia, I think a lot of cities are basically building new things, and new uh, subways, and uh, new uh, icon buildings, new CPDs. So the type of, uh, when we are talking about building things new, uh, you will have a new image. Whereas if you go to uh, Europe, it will be some sort of a repackaging of an uh, old urban setting. So the contrast will be very different in the future. Are there things that Asian cities can learn, if any, from Western cities and vice versa? You mentioned like, uh, you know, uh, obviously in, in, in the older Asian cities also, they may need to repackage their old uh, neighbourhoods as, as well. And certainly even for the uh, 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 Western cities, maybe there are things that they can learn from Asian cities. What are the things do you think that they can learn from one Well, another? I think for the Asian cities, one thing that we can learn from, um, you know, European cities or North American cities is the uh, conservation, right? Uh, just like in Hong Kong, unfortunately, in the uh, you know immediately after the Second World War, 
uh, we have to tear down a lot of you know very nice old buildings uh, to uh, make it into uh, you know new buildings uh, to uh, accommodate uh, economic growth as well as the population growth. But now we regret a little bit, right? We actually we regret a lot because a lot of these type of old buildings have a lot of heritage. And so in terms of uh, Hong Kong, uh, in our new um, urban conservation strategy, uh, basically we are talking about how do we um, revitalize, uh, regenerate, and also rehabilitate uh, these type of old buildings, not only to only tear them away, and, uh, but there are certain buildings that we identify, or even a whole neighborhood that we identify, we need to preserve it. I think this is something that we have to learn from Europe. Right? Right. Now for the, uh, I think the Europe itself, I think uh, they probably also have to look into, for example, you know, how they can make the uh, old uh, city core and to be more ripened. I think the type of development is no longer on having new buildings but how to make this old existing building to be more functional, to be more attractive, right? And so the total, I think, in terms of the operations will be totally different. Uh, you know, when we talk about um, European and Western cities compared to uh, Asian cities. There's one frontier of cities that is not found in the Western city, and that's the mega city, which is predominantly an Asian and maybe in South American uh, phenomena. Um, uh, any any comments about the emergence of these sort of and the, and how the, and how do you plan and govern mega cities? Now, when we talk about mega cities, uh, we are talking about cities with over one, 10 million populations, right? And the reason why in Asia we have so many 10 million uh, population cities is mainly because of population growth, right? People like to go to large cities for job opportunities, for all sorts of different reasons. So this is the reason why we have these uh, 10 million uh, uh, population uh, cities. But not only that, I think now in Asia, particularly in China, or to a certain extent in the future, in maybe in India, you will see these type of so-called mega city regions. Whereas, for example, like the Pearl River Delta, you have a few large cities that agglomerate together, like the Yangtze River Delta and also the uh, uh, Yellow uh, River uh, Delta, uh, that area. So where you have these type of clusters of major cities. This will not happen in the of Europe because, first of all, they do not have this type of population pressure. And uh, secondly, it's uh, because um, the uh, city itself, they also have a lot of, uh, you know, um, a type of a linkage uh, so that they form a certain type of manufacturing as well as a business clusters, yeah. right? So this mega city region will be very different uh, from, uh, you know, these uh, uh, European cities or North American cities. But this whole concept of a mega uh, city region development is now picking up in, uh, also in America. They can see the advantage of having this type of uh, urban agglomerations. Uh, for example, like the uh, US 2050 plan uh, being pro uh, produced by the regional planning associations, they also talk about identifying 10 mega city regions and then trying, trying to see how they can link it up with infrastructures so as to facilitate the uh, type of uh, linkages within the uh, uh, city, uh, within these mega city regions. But in terms of scale, it cannot be comparable to the mega city region we are now talking about in uh, China or uh, in uh, emerging in uh, India. What are some of the challenges of, of this sort of mega city region? The transportation links, how do you feed the uh, how do you feed the people who, you know, because if it's such a big area, the food must come in from much further away, uh, the, the movement and the, the jobs and all that. So what are the sort of challenges you, you, you... I think the challenge will be how do you provide a good governance structure? Uh, for example, uh, like uh, the transport system, uh, like the uh, land use planning system, what type of coordinations, what type of sharing they can have. And uh, there are a lot of conflict going on, a lot of uh, internal competitions going on. How are you going to resolve it? And even people talk about maybe in the future, you only have a one level of government uh, among this uh, mega city uh, region, right? But I do not uh, see that it will be happen. Uh, maybe there will be some sort of a mega city uh, type of um, uh, governance structure that emerge, uh, like something like a council of government that try to you know, operate and coordinate the type of uh, development. But obviously, uh, in order to um, eliminate a lot of unnecessary competitions, duplications of efforts, the mega cities need to be much better coordinated. 
Okay, uh, thank you so much for your time and your thoughts. Um, I, I hope that you have a pleasant stay and, uh, and, a, and a productive uh, conference for you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you.